happy. I am a happiness okay. expert. Hello, hello, everybody. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> to the Art of Life Explorations. You with Angie Hardy again, and we're having a really, really interesting chat with a really, really dynamic, very, very interesting woman. <laughs> I could not wait to get online with the two of us when we get together. It's just like, oh, yada, 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 yada. <laughs> Very interested. For those of you who know me, you know that um, I'm Angela Hardy. I do personal transformation coaching. I teach people how to love themselves, how to love their lives, how to have an experience of themselves and their lives that is joyful and pleasurable and out of angst and out of depression and out of all that sort of stuff and just being able to flow with that experience of I'm alive no matter what shit is happening to me right now. I can feel okay about myself and about my life. And so Penny, who is also a coach um, of a sort, but she does executive coaching, she does happiness coaching. I looked on your website, all sorts of really good stuff. But wow, yeah. what a dynamic, amazing woman. Well, I, yeah, I, I get bored easily, so I change careers a lot. <laughs> um, so I'm actually a happiness specialist, which sounds really cool, um, but actually it means that in the corporate world, it's a, a productivity tool because happy mm -hmm. people are more, sell more cars, you know. <laughs> and um, and at a personal level, um, it's generally death. Actually, <laughs> the people who come to me as clients are people who have lost someone recently. So uh, it's like, yeah, you know, it's like, yay, I'm a happiness coach. Let's talk about some really unhappy things. Happy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am also um, a, an aspiring writer. And I think probably the most expen uh, the, the biggest part of my life is being like this social experimenter. My poor family have, you know, been through like, let's go through the month of having spinach smoothies <laughs> only to, I remember reading an article about um, smaller plates make you feel fuller. So my family had to eat off like on side plates for months. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like they get, uh, mom, uh, they're very accommodating. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're the boss, Penny. Let's just own it. <laughs> so rather than accommodating, probably they're very smart is what you're looking okay, for. Yes, right? yes. They're like, do we care if we have 15 side plates full? <laughs> if it'll make us shut up, it'll yes, fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. okay. So today, the title of our talk is probably the best title we've ever had on life, Art of Life Explorations. It's Knickers Will Roll. And it's Penny's title because it's the title <laughs> of a play that you've been writing, is it not? Or is it a play or a TV series? A, screen, a screenplay, a screenplay. yes. So, it, it, yes, so, so largely title. autobiographical. <laughs> but, um, yes, yeah, so really... Uh, the the title came from the fact that I have spent my whole life being the big girl and the mm -hmm. chubby one, the plump one, the ample one. And recently I went for a tummy tuck and my, I, I say that I have democratic boobs now because I said to the surgeon, I want them to look like they did when I voted in 1994. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's done a fantastic job. They're incredibly democratic. Uh, <laughs> and, and what I really am interested in is how much it meant to me to, to I mean, I, it took me, I stood on that, the, that cliff edge for 15 years, deciding whether I'm gonna jump or not, you know? And what now that it's that? done, the experience is so different to what I thought it would be. Yeah. Tell me first what was hard about deciding, and then we'll talk about what the difference was. In what um, so a big part of it was this is ridiculous money to spend on me. I could spend this on the kids. We could go on a holiday. We, yeah, I could spend, you know, like my husband could have – that 1974 Rolls Royce he perbs over, he's not getting no. it, just no. to be clear. You're getting more <laughs> democratic boobs, babe. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very good psychiatrist who, you know, says things like, 
I know it's really unhealthy, but I need pleasure in my life. So I'm smoking this cigar. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, so a lot of it was about um, sp spending money. I, mean, I, I would spend a huge sum of money on something for a family member without thinking about it. Mm. But for me, you know, I'm the person who, for those 15 years, I mean, my friends used to joke because I wore black yoga pants and a baggy T-shirt on top, you know, for 15 years because spending money on me was hard. And the second thing was, um, and this is an, I've kind of realized after the fact, mm -hmm. is that was the, did I want my boobs up? Or did I want the world to look at my boobs being democratic and mm -hmm. find that attractive? So that thing of like, am I sexy for me or am I sexy for the stereotype of the world was also, um, I not conscious at the time, but since then I've really become conscious of that. And I think that's, uh, um, uh, a huge uh, insight that I got. And the final reason is that I am 49 this year and, and, and there's a whole lot of things that I believe that by 50 I should be able to do. Um, so I had a whole year. <laughs> My whole year has been filled with experiments on everything from you know, um, how to um, put on makeup. I, I discovered that I'm an apple shape. I discovered that when you've had a tummy tuck and you are straight up and down, your knickers roll up and fall down. <laughs> so I have spent the last month buying every different sort of knickers there are. And I have to tell you, Angie, in a world where a thong is in first place, something is very wrong. <laughs> I completely disagree with you. The thong, the thong is the best, babe. The thong is the best. Hey, well, yes, but it's a thong. <laughs> They're going to end up up your crack anyway. Yes. This, is my, this is my theory, right? Those little bastards are going to end up up your crack, and there is nothing like that constantly walking around and yanking your panties down, yanking them down, and yanking them down, and yanking, and them, yanking down. them up on my side. So I've got to roll them side. up and pull them up. Yeah. <laughs> so the thong, it's just like, whoop. It's in. Yeah. <laughs> Those butt cheeks are like that. The thong is held in place, and it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere on the badminton court, on the tennis court, when you're running down the street, <laughs> when you're busy choosing somebody, when you're in the middle of a presentation in front of 500 people, your thong is not moving anywhere. Absolutely. And I need all the help I can get because I also discovered all my pants, especially jeans, skinny jeans are made for people who are ample <laughs> or people who are skinny, right? Not people in the middle. In the middle, they just no. fall down. And, I, you know, um, I went out the other day with, I was out and I'm, I've discovered there's this thing called a belt that holds things up, <laughs> you know. And, um, but now I'm like, you know, there's guys with their beer bellies who mm. are walking around, like hitching their jeans up. And, yep. like, yeah, that when you see the person in Santon City doing that, that's me. <laughs> Okay, well, Sorry. speaking from somebody fairly skinny, skinny jeans yeah. are made for anybody. Hey, because there's hey. a practical anatomical problem where you're needy yes. and it pulls the jeans down no matter Absolutely. what Absolutely. So it's yes. just like it's not a good design. Plus, the thinner your ankles are, the bigger your hips look. I mean, hello. Well, I have no hips. And the more I – and now now I started exercising earlier this year um, – because I have, I want to do a sit up before I die. I want to do a, an unaided sit up. Okay, it's been an aspiration for decades. So I have hired a wonderful lady, Marlene, who comes in, and you know, 
tries to make me do lunges that doesn't go well um, and helps me with this aspiration. Uh, <laughs> where, how did I get onto it, to that? Um, <laughs> oh, yes. So now I'm losing weight there, but I've discovered I only lose weight um, in two places, in my boobs. Luckily, I have my friend, the surgeon, who sorted that out. And my hips, which I didn't really have anyway. I mean, now I've got space in my pants to kind of store nuts for the winter. You know? It's <laughs> I started looking at shapewear, but not the ones to pull you in, the ones to make your bum big. <laughs> And let me tell you, also when shapewear rolls, that no, is don't. like a, it's a whole other category. <laughs> <laughs> the sequel to niggas will roll. Shapewear will roll. <laughs> uh, absolutely. In fact, um, if you look on my um, uh, Facebook page, you will see that I had devoted a lot of time in to shapewear and my views on shapewear. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, yeah, I really hate shapewear. <laughs> <laughs> and you never and see like sexy shorts. Well, I was, you know, I had, I remember like one of those body suits, okay? Yeah. And I had finally found one that had like bra straps, so it stayed up, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And after about three months of getting completely undressed every time I need to eat the twee, I realized that it was actually like the crotch could open. Good. And you know, when you, I was sitting in a car dealership, with a, a client I was working with, having a wee and going, I just really thought that when I started wearing crotchless panties, <laughs> It, this isn't this is not how I imagined it you know <laughs> this was not the scenario I was planning for <laughs> yeah, it was going to be hotter than this somehow <laughs> <laughs> yes yes especially when it's like that beige skin color oh. <laughs> it's not even a black one <laughs> so Okay, so talking then about when you had the surgery, and because this is a really interesting part of it, isn't it? It's like you think about it for so long, you have to talk yourself into being able to spend that money on yourself. It is a desire that you've had. You thought it was going to do something for you. Yeah. Did it fulfill? What happened? What was the experience? Well, it didn't, but not how I expected. Mm -hmm. okay, so, so my expectation was that... I would come out um, with my face, but Sophia Loren's body, you know. And obviously, like, I just came out with boobs that are hitched up. and But this big flap of skin that I'd had since then. My children were enormous. So my one son was uh, 4.8 kilograms when he was born. So since then, I have had, and, uh, and I'm chubby, so I had had this kind of apron of skin and one of the things I discovered is that I actually realized that I used to hold it as a kind of safety measure of here is me here is the world but it's okay because I've got this this flabby suit of armor you know? <laughs> um so it made me realize a couple of things like one that for a long long time I've had massive body dysmorphia I was unable to see, and I am still like this. I see people, you can put on 10 kgs, you can lose 10 kgs. I just see Angie. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and I realized that I had not really looked in the mirror for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so I actually didn't know what my body looked like as a starting point, you know? Mm. And um, and I thought that it would make me sexy for the world. And one of the big things, uh, another big insight and a big benefit of it for me looking back mm. is that it made me question that. Like, are we wanting to look good, feel good, 
because if I wear the thong, he'll think I'm sexy. Mm -hmm. Or if I wear the thong, I will feel more sexy because I won't be hitching my knickers up in the shopping center. Mm -hmm. So, and it really made me feel like I, I, there's lots of work for me to do in terms of um, all this stuff for me. Because actually when uh, I, I, I was one, I mean, I have a completely weird family, but um, part of that was my weirdness, not theirs, but deciding age 10 that it was my job to look after everybody. And yeah. since then, really, my life has been, you know, looking after everybody. If I'm not looking after the, any, everybody, my family calls, call, they call basically all my friends my waifs and strays. <laughs> 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 because everybody I know is dysfunctional in some way, but they, they're <laughs> the most fun. Um, yeah. But the big, big thing that we were talking about is how little I care about it now. Mm -hmm. So I look, I, I do look in the mirror every day. I have spent money on clothes, but clothes that make me feel good and make me able to do what I want to do. I have discovered that um, high heels, um, they're not a decorative item. I actually can wear, wear them. And I discovered a man who will cut the heels a little bit shorter so I can actually walk in them. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and that I am allowed to wear high heels just to go to pick and pay if I want to. <laughs> wow. um, because I had this view that because it was all about everyone else, well, like, why would I put on a dress, especially now that I'm working less and less in the corporate world? You know, it's like, well, why would I wear a dress? Mm -hmm. And everyone will, will laugh if I wear a dress. And I'm like... Penny, have you been into a shop? Have you seen how much space is dedicated to dresses? People mm. wear them without laughing at each other. <laughs> yeah, um, this is a very interesting topic for me because it's about that, that quintessential little seed that is, who do I give myself permission to be? Yeah. How do I give myself permission to be? Yeah. Have I created this persona about myself within myself, within my own thinking that restricts me to being just that thing so that I'm Absolutely. showing up in the world in just that way? And that means that I can't wear high heels and I can't wear a dress or I can't, you know, I can't dye my hair or I can't wear false eyelashes if I wanted to or whatever the story is because yes. I've told myself the story about myself that I'm trying to then convince the world possibly is my story or do you know what I mean? That that becomes somehow absolutely in the world. I'm that person, and that's really, really interesting for me because that is the thing that stops us from whatever it is that we want, whatever it absolutely. is, absolutely self authenticity. We we stop ourselves from going into the world of this. I feel like it. That's why. Because absolutely, be something. Yes. Um, uh, uh, before I say, before I agree with you furiously on that, um, I do have to admit that there is a magnetic false eyelash somewhere embedded in the carpet in my bedroom. <laughs> um, because wearing false eyelashes was on my list of things I was going to learn to do. Yeah. And so I thought, oh, I don't want, I don't like the idea of glue. So um, I'll get these magnetic ones where they have like one on the bottom, one on the top. And then I dropped it, and I am I'm at that age where we have multiple sets of glasses. <laughs> so these glasses allow me, in theory, yeah. to see far away. The six car accidents I've had this month would suggest otherwise. Um, <laughs> these ones allow me to see the computer screen. Yeah. None of them allow me to see false eyelashes on my carpet <laughs> 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 or earring backs. Or, I mean, there's so many yeah. things. I, I have to say, like, that carpet, if you had to go through my vacuum cleaner's bag, like, you could, I think, like, 
make a living. <laughs> I'm here on my earring backs <laughs> and makeup. Uh, all those little pods that were in the side of the camera, they're all gone too. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally agree in terms of like this, who do I want to be? And when I look at my list, so my list of all these things I was going to do before I turned 50 started out being, oh, I will get blue glasses because one of my friends is an optometrist and she was like, you know, blue glasses would look great on you. Yeah. Can you see the language? Um, it was... Um, it was sitting with my parents whilst my father and mother have an enormous argument because my father is now telling my mother um, that, let me just get rid of, he, he's a good person to talk about. Um, uh, um, <laughs> um, they're having a furious argument because if my mother had taught me how to put on lipstick, Penny wouldn't be the way she is. And you know, when you're like, it's like, where do I start? Like in that conversation, like, like, what is Penny like? You know, and my mother's telling him that she's got thin lips and doesn't suit lipstick, and they're having this huge. And you know, when you're like, I'm right here, and I don't yeah. really wear a lot of lipstick because I don't really like the feeling that much. <laughs> Yeah. But it was one of the things I went and did was had a makeup lesson and and learned to wear red lipstick, which I actually quite like, you know. Um, you know, it's one of those things. It's like there is something about red lipstick that for me is that kind of like, yeah, get out the way, bitch. You know, like, <laughs> it's you know, like actually red lipstick and all those boots that but lace up in the front. Yes. Army like the, <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> I laughed the other day because um, I was in the store and I had, was trying on a jacket, but like in the open space, but you know, yeah. before COVID and all these things. And I said, oh, I love this jacket. It makes me feel halfway between a dominatrix and a Gestapo officer. And then I hear from the other side of the shop, Penny Castle. There is only one person who would ever make that comment about the game. <laughs> I totally hear you. I love clothes like that. They're just making like we should actually go fancy dress every day of our lives, in my opinion. Um, no, like so it's one of the things that I actually have started doing. It's difficult though to like use paint stripper in like a designer dress you know, and, and heels you know so i have to, I, I you know i am i i, I am uh, you know uh, toning it down a little bit just whilst i'm doing jobs like that um well, look i don't know yes. when my clients come around just in case they don't. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but absolutely is i'm allowed sexy underwear you know, I am allowed to um, have all my shirts have a V-neck so that you can see my boobs because yes. I like my boobs. Yes. <laughs> I'm allowed to go to Woolworths and buy 12 pairs of jeans because I, I think you get COVID from, tra from tra uh, changing rooms. But it, yeah, I know. It I know, okay. but it's like having having just like six weeks ago finished with COVID. <laughs> Hopefully, this COVID, um, I um, I notice now who cleans and who doesn't. So this weekend, I went off and I bought two sizes of all the jeans that are appropriate for apple shape. <laughs> um and tried them all on and now one of the things i have to do this week is go and return 10 pairs of jeans and get my money back yeah. <laughs> for um or you know mom jeans they weren't good in the 80s you know they were a bit like that that fashion that we went through um in the, like the early 90s where we wore trank suits and court shoes like 
Oh, mum jeans, like they, they remind me of that era. <laughs> it's well, like I can see my mum walking years. down in tracksuit pants and high heels, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it allows, it's given me permission to do all those things. And the big thing that has shifted in my language and my thinking about it mm. is that I am buying the jeans that make me feel sexy. And now the conversations that I'm having are not, uh, you can, Penny, you can shop at uh, Willie's or Donna Claire or Queen's Park because they have big sizes. Mm -hmm. It is really nice to be able to shop in, in normal shops. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is really nice to be able to phone your friend and go, who does good jeans, you know? Yeah. Um, that is one of the big benefits, you know, is that I've come down to a size where I don't have to be in, in the fatty section. Yeah. Um, um, but that, but for me, you know, mm -hmm. so the ladies in bras and things, like, know me because I go in and browse and tell them which ones I'm saving for. <laughs> <laughs> And now, of course, it's like it's completely changed because it's the wretched thong again. <laughs> it's the wretched thong. I'm telling you, once you go thong, you will never go back. Because well, you never have you to take those out of your butt again. Yeah, I found Brazilians also like they creep up your butt straight away. So no, they're no. like, so like Brazilians, I quite like because it's like you put them on and you go, oh, these are sexy. It creeps up your ass, so you're basically wearing a thong anyway, and you get on with your day. So <laughs> it's a fat thong. That's fat the thong. <laughs> it's like the whole thongs, thongs and up yes. Your yes, it's actually, it's That's true. So I need to maybe That's start buying awesome. more of my underwear from like the sex shops that have like just the string, you know. You with a, okay. this string with a little heart, you know. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, but okay. I like going to sex shops. <laughs> no, I do like, like comparison you. pricing between. Maybe help you. <laughs> you buy jockey, um, seamless thong. Okay. They're not that sexy. But there's no, you know, little panty line, no little, and they don't squeeze. But you, you see, so and from. here's the issue. You don't get to walk around the playing fields of one of the Santon schools, which I won't mention, going, I bought these Snickers from a sex shop. Ha. <laughs> right. I have it's also okay. learned that you need to have a, th like, like, a slender lady garden to make crotchless things work. <laughs> Otherwise, they kind of bulge out. It's not a good look. That's not a good look. way too much. <laughs> I think we might have gone off topic. But <laughs> we did a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> but, anyway, but I do think the main point is actually my narrative about myself has changed, about who am I being sexy for, for me. Am I allowed to spend money on me? Well, I would spend that money on groceries without blinking. Yes. So why am I? Why would you know? You know, spending it on you know the second hand uh, Prada high heels <laughs> that I found on Instagram. Why is that worse? You know, it's yeah. you know other than that, everyone's hungry, but. We could all do with being hungry for a while. <laughs> <laughs> this, but this is the whole issue, issue, isn't it? It's like it's not just the groceries or the Prada or the whatever. It's who, what am I allowed to be? Can I spend myself on myself? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, do I have permission to like myself? Do I have permission to like myself? Do I have permission to feel sexy? Do I have permission to take up space? I and mean, one of the yes. things that I am always looking at is body language in meetings. Yes. Yes. And men make themselves bigger 
and they take up space. Mm -hmm. And when they are loud and thump their hand on the table, yep. they are showing great powerful leadership. Yes. In that same room will be a woman who's probably more senior on the organogram. She's got her legs crossed in her arms like this. And, yes. you know, we, we've come from a culture that want, women must be small and women must be quiet. So there's also something that goes, no. I'm going to be loud. I'm loud. So all those times when I had my family go, shh, keep it down, beep you. <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry, there's Mom. another issue, which is beautiful, sexy clothing, which really, I mean, let's face it, a, a cute little pencil skirt or a nice yes. pair of really shoes or a push-up bra or a little tight top is beautiful. It is sexy. Yes. But... Once again, you don't stand big in clothing. Absolutely. That narrows your profile. You can't do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You can't. As you can't women, walk as fast as everyone else, you know. Right? <laughs> Back in the French court in Versailles, where all the men were the ones wearing high heels and lace and makeup yes. and beauty patches and whatever, yes. they were trotting around in this little way because this is the sign of I do nothing with my body. I don't have Absolutely. To. Um, yeah. I am. Um, and it's for somebody else because it's how I look to you. Yes. And that, that's a big deal for me was that the question always when I try something on is, will, you know, my clients think this looks, you know, professional enough? Will my husband think this looks sexy enough? Mm. You know, like, but the question was all about the other. There was never a moment where I stood in that change room and went, damn, I'm good looking. You know? <laughs> um, and that for me is, you know, one of the things that I want to be is I want to have the permission to be big and bold and take big steps, you know, in my high heels. Haven't mastered that yet. Um, um <laughs> Penny, but, I'm sorry, you need longer legs to take big <laughs> Yes. I'm well, that's it. You, you see, know. it's like, and if you go into corporate head offices, it, yeah. you know, it's one of my kind of, when I am supreme dictator, one of the things that happen is that every architect in the world will wear like five inch heels and walk through every building they design. Yes. Because there yeah. is not a head office or a corporate building that doesn't have flooring material that is unsuitable for somebody in high heels. You know? Wheelchair access, high wheelchair access. Absolutely. Yeah, we are, don't get me started on wheelchair access. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a good opportunity to, to, to ask you, what have you learned? Like, what are your hints and tips for people who are maybe struggling with their own bodies and looking for that sense of what do I do about it? What is, how do I find that, that permission in me to, to be bootalicious, to be beautiful? I mean, and before I even ask you that, I just want to say that it's very interesting to me because I've dealt with people who are struggling with weight before and they come to me and they're like, can you help me with weight and whatever? And of course, I never help them with their weight because they know much more about dieting than I will ever know, Right. So I never Absolutely. Help what yes. I help them with is to see the 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 the, the conversations that they're having, the, the the sabotages that they're doing, the way that they see themselves, how they view the world, the story that they tell themselves about thin people. Absolutely. And that is so common. That story about thin people. Thin, thin people, people are, are having more fun than me. You know, yeah, it's like me fun. and my blonde hair. It you know I've had it for nearly ten years now and. I'm still waiting to be having more fun than everyone else. <laughs> but is like thin people are bitchy and thin people are have to be, if I'm perfect, I have, if I'm thin, I have to be perfect in everything. Yeah. And yeah. so I have to become a better person if I'm thin somehow and I don't know how to do that. And so, and they have stories about how thin people are so judgmental and thin people, thin people, thin people, thin people. And that's what's so interesting to me about that is that I spoke to one of my friends actually about this and she was saying, yeah, you know, she's got all this thinking about thin people, but she would love to lose weight. Yeah. And I had to laugh at her and say, And there's well, this judgment, people. yes. Yeah. And you she's know. like, you know, thin people always judging fat people for having weight. And I'm like, hold on, 
you're judging some people for me. <laughs> Absolutely. Judge and a lot of people. that, we, it's like, right in our DNA you know I mean I had one of my most I mean she is one she is the most beautiful woman I have ever known um and she was always she'd go home from uh she'd get home from school and go you know mom I left my lunch box at home I'm starving and her mother would go well you know what skipping skipping lunch like that's probably a good thing for you you know to this child and about a year ago um this friend of mine put on 20 kilograms in the space of about four months with an undiagnosed thyroid problem yeah. and suddenly she's gone from this kind of waif like person she has boobs like good boobs you know she has a waist like and all the time I have to say to her like I know you you know well now I think she's she gave me some of the great tips because she said her life is so much better 20 kg is heavier um one because I mean, she really is sexy, <laughs> but two is, you know, she works in an environment where she has lots of parents to deal with. And the comments of, boy, I wouldn't have done well in your subject if I had had a teacher who looked like that from the dad. She's like, you know, like, how do you answer that? <laughs> and and like actually fuck off <laughs> yeah. um and yeah. she's like now i can you know wear a high neck something and they they're not going to say anything anymore you know and now people respect me because i'm actually a subject matter expert you know and i can feel sure about myself about my intellectual being and that's a really interesting dynamic because yes. I find it again and again and again. My most attractive in the yeah. stereotype way yeah. uh, friends all have doubts about their abilities and their intellect. All yeah. of them. Um, well, so, watched, you know, it's... Yeah. I watched um, and, that, well, and she was saying, yeah. you will never in your life meet a group of women who have less confidence, less self-worth, and less self-esteem yes. than a bunch of people who hit what what modern society is essentially calling the genetic lottery of that yeah. straight up and down body, which I don't actually think is sexy at all, in my opinion. No, but, no. But she says it's like they every one of them lacks confidence, but they're considered to be the most beautiful and paid to be the most beautiful people in the world. Absolutely. So this, is, this is really what it's it comes down to is the beautiful people, the not so beautiful people, the very slim people, the waif people, the not so slim people, the, the overweight people, we've all got the story, yaggity, 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 yag. And the difficulty is getting out of our own heads. And that's Absolutely. And it all boils down to, I am not enough, you know. Um, it's, it's interesting, my, I, my children, by accident, actually, went to a very snooty play group, you know, preschool. Mm -hmm. And so it was me and the trophy wives. But you yeah. have never met a more stressed group of people because you have all these women who know that they have a shelf life. So I'm going, I've got to rush because I've got to go and talk to a middle-aged white man about how it's very lonely being in the corner office and they're yeah. like I have to rush because of spinning <laughs> yeah. and <laughs> um, yeah. you know but all of us have this thing of uh, somehow I am deficient yes. where and however I came out it's not enough that's it and how do I then go prove to the world that I am somehow enough. What what is my little methodology of doing that? Yeah. And then so that I can get the feedback from the world, which is never going to give it to you, by the way, to say, yes. okay, you've made it. Now you are enough. Yeah. And then somehow that can overcome that years and years and years of complete commitment to your bullshit, 
which will always tell you you are not enough, no matter how many times the outside world or how many ways the outside world tells you you are enough. And so the cycle goes round and round Absolutely. and round and round. And you're just looking for the next goal and the next goal or the more beautiful or the higher thing or the more accolades or the smarter award. Or yeah. Because we're looking in the wrong place. Um, have you ever watched the TED Talk by Sean Atchell um, about it's, it's what's it called, the strange something about happiness, but he talks about um, how we have pushed happiness over the cognitive horizon. So you meet your target, we increase your target. You lose the weight. You, you, like, say, for me, for example, I am halfway between two sizes, you know. Do I eat more chocolate digestive biscuits or do I diet? You know, like, <laughs> I'm going decisions, to... Decisions, decisions. <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, reach your perfect size and then you'll be looking in the mirror and be like, oh, jeez. I actually have a friend who is like that. She had her earlobes um, surgically tampered with. I, I, I actually have to say, I never have looked before or since at her earlobes. Yeah. But she's had everything else done and suddenly her earlobes were problematic in some way. And it's just this. Well, that brings You know, she saves up her money and she gets cut up, you know. Right, um, because that's the illusion that... Once again, it's from the outside in, I can learn to be okay and enough. And yeah. then this one doesn't quite work. So I felt great for five minutes because. And then now, let me tell you, my I'm looking, are I'm fantastic. Thinking, Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're doing one thing and then you're done, because I think there is that difference, isn't it? Is that some people have surgery and they do one thing and they're like, that's the thing that's been bugging me forever. Yes. And some people go, if only I looked better, then you do the lips. Yes. It hasn't made And then we do the inner thighs and then the bingo wings. And then the, right. you know. I'm sure that at some point there'll be the sense of myself that is sufficiently perfect and then I can feel it. But yes. it never, that point never arises. It, yeah. And, it's, and for me, it's that outside, you know, the external and the internal locus of control. And I actually made, may, you see, I'm very prepared. I made notes. Um, but some of the things that I think that you can do, there are a whole lot of things that you can stop. So in, the, um, in our, our brains, so in the world, there is something like 5 billion bits of information available to us. Um, at any given moment. The processing power of your brain is five bits a second. So that means you filter. You have to because you can't process it. It's not, you know, you, you're, you know, you need an upgrade, you know, yes. um, which I'm sure will happen within my lifetime. Um, so now <laughs> you... Yeah, you're almost now. <laughs> <laughs> and we see the things that we believe to be true. They call it the Camry effect, but it's that thing of like, you buy a polo, suddenly everyone yeah. has a polo, you know? Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to then change the data yes. that is in our environment so that we're removing all those things that make us feel not enough. So the very first thing is, is I actually took a month long social media break, which has now become an eight month social media break. Um, um, but then um, I, I then ditched a lot of people, the, kind of, the people who, you know, would say things like, you know, maybe, maybe you shouldn't, wear just you know a shirt like that you know and i'm like are you kidding these are 1994 boobs of course i'm showing them you know but they didn't say that so i ditched quite a lot of people yeah um whatever you need to do and this is your world and my world and and the therapeutic world is you do need somebody to reflect back to you your internal narrative because yes. it, we are blind to it in ourselves. Yes. You know, I don't. 
watching yeah, this. I, there's things that I don't notice in my language until mm -hmm. somebody says, "Do you did you see that um, you just congratulated someone for losing weight, honey? Like, you know, that's not part of the narrative of being whatever size is fine. You know, um, so for me, one of the big things that I think people should do is work with somebody, um, not a friend or a family, because it's got to be somebody who's not going to cry because you're sad, you know, who is actually going to work with you to reflect back to you, can you see it? And then help you find for yourself what makes you feel um, great. Um, I think we were talking the other day about people's obsession with keto and seven meals a day and all these fights about it. And I'm like, you know what? Um, why don't you eat the things that you like and make you feel great, you know? And when we, we made that change in our family, now we don't eat at the same time because it turns out like my son wants supper at half past three and I'm a 6 p.m. on the nose person, you know. Yeah. Um, we eat different things because he, you know, he likes, he can eat basically Thai cream curry every day yeah. and veggie, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's the other thing. And the, um, the, the other thing for me is um, there is so many people I see who are ignoring the big health issue mm. and worrying about weight. Mm. So they can feel they've got a lump, but that they're, they're not mm. going to their GP to have that checked out, you know? Yeah. So for me, a big thing is look after your health, you know? If you need to lose weight because you sat on your child's baby and killed it, Okay, that, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, okay, you know, health does mean losing weight. Um, yeah. But a lot of it is that um, I have spent a huge amount of time and money this year having that filling done, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. where I couldn't chew on the left side for three years, you know, um, having office glasses made because I can't see my screen. Um, mm. Having the mammogram, go, going to the gynae, you know. I went to the gynae. Uh, sorry, this is an aside. And I was like, yeah, uh, and I go to the gynae so little that I don't have a gynae, you know, like you know, my gynae. Yeah. So I just find a friend who goes, here's your gynae, I'll go there. So I go to the gynae and I have forgotten, of course, that my friend, um, who is equally bad at going to the gynae, last saw him 18 years ago when her son was born, okay? <laughs> so she goes, he's really good. And I get in and I'm like, whew, he looks quite old. And then, of course, I remember that I'm almost 50. So if I think he looks old, he must be like 500 years old. You know? <laughs> and then, of course, because of having an illness in our family that we went through, yeah. um, you know, there are some things that I know quite a lot about. So he starts spouting this rubbish about cancer. And you know, when you're like, no, 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 no. First of all, we would want to know, like, is it an adenocarcinoma? You know, is it a, <laughs> and you know, when you're like, <sighs> okay, I think I, when I know more <laughs> about it than you do, like, mm, I don't think this is gonna, be, uh, is gonna work yeah. out for us, you know? Um, so the health issues, you know? Um, the other thing that I have done is um, I went off social media completely. I am a little bit back on Facebook because I like to buy things on the Facebook market, but I don't really go onto the, the threads anymore. I do use Instagram a little bit to find secondhand product issues. Um, but there is one thing I would do is ditch all those people who are strangers who are trying to sell you their summer shred program and who have, you know, a 30 centimeter 
well, everything, you know, like it's perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. um, just get the, just take them off your feet, you know, unfriend them or unfollow them. Um, they are they are telling you to do the summer trade because that's their business. They want to make money out of that. It's not because they care about your butt. They are not doing this because Angie, I love you, but you know, your butt touches your heels. They are not, they're, they're not doing that. They're going, your butt's just fine, but I'd really like to make $500, thanks. You know? Huge, huge bug there for me. The, the magazines that take a perfectly lovely individual and airbrush her to the point that she could not recognize yes. her. Make her eyes bigger, make her ears smaller, make her jaw, jawline change to the point that she doesn't look like herself. Absolutely. And then a picture of what a woman should look like. And then people buy it, and then people yeah. read the magazine and feel bad. And this is for me. It's like, I haven't watched a magazine like that in probably thirty years, maybe maybe even longer, because I and really I, think that you need to pay attention to the way that you feel when you expose yourself to things. Yeah, and when you and I am fashion, loving this trend of celebrity women, these yeah. the Angelinas, you know, doing this me without my makeup yeah. because you know what you could pass them in the street and they would look just like anyone else you know and their thighs do touch you know if your thighs don't touch before they get to your hips you need to go and to a dietitian because you are underweight <laughs> you know? um, and you have a problem <laughs> edit where you pay attention it's the same yes. thing for happiness. It's the same thing for a feeling of um, authenticity. Can I be myself? Yeah. Well, if you're seeing everybody not being themselves, if you're seeing everybody that you suddenly feel like you've got to catch up with and be more like, it's going to be harder for you to be an expression of yourself. If you're Absolutely. comparing yourself all the time, it's going to be harder for you to be an expression of yourself. So we have to be responsible for what we're looking at. Yep. And we have to be responsible for the story that we're telling ourselves about that. About that, yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is just to try and get rid of all that noise because that's all it is. It's noise in the system. Get rid of it. Get rid of those friends who you actually really hate, you know, <laughs> and their children have just won, you know, they're seven years old and they've won a road scholarship. And now not only are you too fat, but your children are too stupid. You know, it's like, just, just delete them. Guys, you don't like those people. Go back to it being where they, you had 30 people on Facebook because they were your friends who live in New Zealand. <laughs> um, that is a big deal for me. Um, um, yeah, ditching those people. It was, uh, uh, um. I was ruthless with really? getting rid of people. Ruthless. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've just, uh, you know, um, the question I asked is, are, are you adding to my life or taking away from my life? Like, uh, and I, I actually call it my um, casualty room test. Is mm -hmm. like, if something happened to my son, would you be one of the people who are sitting there not moving at two o'clock in the in, in the morning until mm -hmm. you've heard that the kid the kid is fine, mm -hmm. and that's like who I am now is like you know you're a casualty you know two o'clock in the morning casualty person or not I was really that ruthless. Okay, but um, we, I'm going to just go on for a little while on the solo layout. Keep going, okay? Okay, cool. The next thing that. Um, you should do is if you do stay on social media hashtag body positive um and there are others there are curve positive some of them have more of a, a sexuality bent than others and that's your choice what you want to see but what that did for me was it started feeding data to me of women whose nipples did touch their belly button and was still dancing around their room, belly dancing around their room and being sexy. You don't have to have your boobs on your shoulders to be sexy. Um, 
other although it is really nice to have democratic groups like i will say that you know um but then so what you've done then is you have deleted the stream of data that makes you feel bad and you've replaced it with a stream of data of people who look like you and are expressing their joy and their sexuality and how great they feel about themselves just looking like normal people. Now, I'm actually glad that we're solo screen for a moment because I am, uh, I have an interest in uh, the BDSM world. Like I find it absolutely fascinating. Um, so go and join fatlife.com uh, because what you will see in there, I mean, this is if you're, in, if you're a bit porny, you know, I have to, I have to tell you, like, it's porny. Um, okay. but, <laughs> but what you will see is women spreading themselves open and they are a size 22 and they are the sexiest goddesses you've ever seen in your life. There are a lot of songs on, on Fat Life. <laughs> um, if you're still feeling like you have that external locus of control and you need in, uh, in, um, some data to come in that's telling you that you are sexy, you are enough, it's really easy. You join Tinder and you join Fit Life. Your let me tell you, your inbox will be full with guys who want to do all kinds of very bizarre things to you. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> everything does start with you are so sexy. I want to beep you so much. Like so, if you need the affirmation, it is there and it is easy to get. You know, <laughs> I, I, I have a friend who's going through an ugly divorce, and I created a Tinder account just to know. And I had to delete it after 48 hours because I just couldn't cope with the amount of incoming messages. Um, just a word of caution, if you are going to join any of those, please have the you don't know who I am at gmail.com. Um, you know, don't put your your corporate email address as your account. Like, just don't. You know, it, it's not going to do well in your performance review. Um, so that is it. And then um, if, you, you know, going back to this health thing is I hear so many people who are stuck in a particular space of like, I only use traditional allopathic medicine or I only go to a homeopath or I only go to the Ayurveda, that one, that I can't yeah. say. Um, um, but actually use everything that's at your disposal because you can't feel that you're enough if you, for example, can't get off the floor without help, you know. I, I uh, again, read an article that said, you know, one of the, the really good predict uh, predictors of longevity is can you get off the floor without using your hands, which, of course, meant like six months of me dropping to the floor <laughs> and then like practicing different methods. And actually, it's just method. <laughs> um and then the other thing is, and, I, and, and Angie, I just want to give you a punt on this, is um, one of the things that I have spent money on um, and is worth every cent is um, the float. I call it my floating. I'm going floating today. But mm -hmm. spending time, if you are not somebody, well, even if you are somebody who has a, uh, you know, doesn't want to have complete lack of stimulation. You can put, you know, open the lid or, or whatever you need to do. But going into the, what's the, what's the official name for the manage? We call it flotation tank. It's also known as a sensory deprivation tank. Or that, an yeah. Tank. So that for me has made a huge difference. And I really was thinking about what is it? What is it that makes lying in a pool of Epsom salts, you know? I mean, really, up until I went in one, Epsom salts are for scrubbing the dead skin off your feet, right? That's what you use it for, you know? Um, 
Um, and uh, and there was three things for me. Yeah. Um, you know, for I mean, just to kind of uh, to preempt this is I have a strong belief that the pandemic is not COVID. The pandemic is anxiety. Um, we are we have driven ourselves to a point where we will never be enough. Yeah. Um, and what that does for me is that I have a long term anxiety, underlying anxiety. Actually, I'm at the point now where it's path a pathology. Mm -hmm. I think, and I think it is for most people, but you know, uh, most people are suffering with anxiety. Uh, and by the way, being anxious makes loads of cortisol on your body and makes you fat. So, you know, there's a good reason to dare if you want to be thin <laughs> and a bitch and all those things that go with it, you know. Um, actually, you won't be because you'll have less anxiety. I, yeah. I, I mean, like, I have to say, like, people go, you know, my friend at school, Adam's dad said he used to work with you in your corporate career. And then I said, to, oh, I hope it wasn't when I was going through my bitch phase. And my son looks at me and says, you've been going through your bitch face since 1975, mom. Like, you know, <laughs> but reduce <You> my... <laughs> so, re so the first thing is it helps me reduce my anxiety levels. Yes, it's very, um, very good. Yeah, and yeah, I mean, I you can talk, I think, mm. in detail about what yeah. it's doing physiologically. Yeah. I just know that it works. Yeah. I just know that I come out of there and it's like, <sighs> you know, I can breathe yeah. again. I, 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 I don't know if you've noticed, like when I walk in, mm. I stomp in. <laughs> yes, you know, and when I leave, well, we talk about this shit and I hang around for like ruining your life, you know, burning your dinner, you know, that kind of yeah, stuff. Sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, I won't leave. You're sitting there going, oh, why won't you leave? It. <laughs> God, and she's got her knickers around her ankles again. <laughs> um, the second thing for me is it manages overwhelm. Um so I talk a lot about my friends of like, I can't do that today because I'm hiding under the dining room table with my duvet because just that the, this world that we live in is, I mean, right now on my PC, I have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six apps that are sending me information. And it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And some of them are nice. Some of them are 49 texts from my sister who wants me to, you know, renovate her flat and make it look like the Hyatt for four and 50. But that's a different story. <laughs> um, but that overwhelm of too much information, too many people, too, and because I have this, I must help, yeah. to, I, I've, I've emptied my cup. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. uh, you know, I've given, you know, I've made you feel better. I've made you feel better. You feel better. And what, and what has happened is you have put it all on my shoulders and I'm exhausted. Yeah. So just to go where no one can, it's like, an, well, now it's two hours. It started as an hour and now it's two hours <laughs> of just no oh, one can heaven. get to me here. You know, like, I, oh, it's, it, yeah, it's brilliant. Um and interestingly enough, during my coach training, I mean, and we are talking 15 years ago, I yeah. came to you to try it because one of the things that we were asked to do was to go and try all these different things yeah. so that they were things that you could offer as potential yeah. options for your clients, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember it being the longest hour of my life because I had places to be and people to see and things to do and lie and what what the hell am I doing lying in water yeah <laughs> um so I do think maybe you have to be in the right place but that the overwhelm anxiety and the other thing and I mean there have been days <laughs> where you've had to bang on the lid <laughs> with a broom to, because I just fall asleep. I actually don't even know if I'm asleep or whether I'm unconscious, but fatigue. You know, I have, the world at the moment is everywhere we look. 
um, we have um, a, a journalistic environment that is based on bad news. So we never hear about, oh, the extra, you know, how, how you know, nurse so-and-so gave 763 people their vaccines. We don't hear that story, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't hear the story about how um, in some areas having the defence force there is welcomed by the community because they feel safer. They feel like I actually can walk to the store, you know. Yeah. And I mean, the, my favourite story is that, you know, on New Year's Eve, um, with, we, went, we were in heavy lockdown on New Year's, if you remember, and for the first time in history, there were no cases in casualty at Baraguana Hospital. It's never happened before. Yeah. And that for me is, you know, it's like that's what I, the, the data stream that energises me, that makes me want to get out there and participate and, and, I, and I don't get that because that doesn't sell news and adverts, you know. Um, and of care and compassion of where people are stepping out to be of service. Absolutely. And there are so many people doing things. And, 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 same, and not COVID-related. There's so many people really? who have remembered that it actually feels great to do something nice for someone else. It's actually not for the other person. It's for no. you because you feel great, you know. No. It's, and you know, I community and worthy and and adding value. Absolutely. You, uh, you know, once a month, I, I deliver seven kilograms of margarine to chalk. Who uh, they they provide um, you know they they look after kids who are having cancer treatment you know yeah. I've got to tell you is I mean I have a good cry on the way home because my son had cancer but yeah. it that five minutes where I am with the house mother giving her her margarine I am king of the world queen of the world yeah. goddess you know I feel fantastic. For her, she's like, yay, I'm not going to have to buy margarine this week. I'm like, I am freaking oh, you know? margarine. Awesome. <laughs> yes, you, you know, so I should be getting a medal. <laughs> <laughs> you should wear your fairy um, ring when you deliver the margarine. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and, they, and they would actually love her. <laughs> Fancy drink um, margarine delivery. Yes. <laughs> um, but having to work at filtering... You know, so first of all, you've got to change the data. But there's still tons of data that you can't change. Yeah. So what do you, you what we need to then change? We have to do a whole lot of work to change our filters so that we're finding the data in the world that energizes us, that makes us feel good, that makes us know that we are sexy and clever and all the rest. But that takes work. And it's hard. It's hard yes. because we don't know how to pay attention. Absolutely. Me, if there is one thing that changes everything, it is learning to pay attention to the stream of your mind. Yes. Mindful attention, awareness that you are creating the experience in the thinking and the attention that you're placing on it. Absolutely. Things. Where are you looking, you know? Where are you looking <laughs> and what are you doing with it? Absolutely, so, you know, it's like when my son came home from school, you know, and said, you know, Johnny, like, hit me in the stomach today, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm all ready to, like, go to the school, like, this is violence and what have you. And my husband says, where were your hands when he did that? And my <laughs> son's like, they were here. <laughs> it's like, well, then... Uh, in that case, I think we'll just leave it. <laughs> I think you guys are square, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it, you're absolutely right. It takes work to put down your phone. I promise you, even if it's just Netflix, you'll love it more if you're only watching Netflix, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been an interesting week for me because my domestic worker and a designer that I, I work with, both they said it in different ways. So the designers said to me, Penny, 
one room, one item at a time. That's mm -hmm. how you renovate a house. Mm -hmm. And my yeah. domestic worker said, the reason you've just kicked over the tin of paint is because the tin of paint was open because you're trying to do five things at the same time. Mm. So just put the lid on the tin of the paint, please. You know, <laughs> but it's the same lesson. It's like, yes. like we've got to be conscious of what we're focusing on, conscious about how we process that yes. and do one thing at a time. Yes. And that takes a vast amount of energy. It's, it's, it's the simplest thing to do and the hardest thing to do in our lives now but is to say, easier. I'm switching it off, you know? Yeah, it, Sorry? Does, yeah. it does get easier. When you, yes. Awareness and, and, and focusing and paying attention is like any other thing, a habit, actually. You are Absolutely. creating in your brain that tell your brain, this is what I want, become good at it. And so it's like I play tennis, I want to hit a good serve, I practice my serve. Absolutely. Such as I don't think about my serve because my serve works the way that my serve works. And you can yeah. renovate your mind and you can redesign and 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 hack your mind in the same way. But you have Absolutely. to be and do so, it yourself. Yeah, so creating it and also knowing that you can come at it from different directions. And yes. that for me is why having a thinking partner is awesome. So yeah. I think for me yeah. is it's really, really hard for me to, I mean, you know, I am, it's really, really hard for me to focus on one thing, you know. Yeah. Um, but what do I know? Well, I know that two hours in a flotation tank yeah. slows it down, yeah. make, really calms good. my mind, makes, it, it, it revives me, it regenerates me, it makes it possible for me then to get into the car and go, okay, I'm not thinking about supper and my son's matric and what color the walls are going to be in my sister. I'm not. I'm actually, I don't think I'm really thinking of anything when I drive home afterwards. But that for me is what I love about the, the flotation is that it's another strategy that feeds my somatic being, but also my mental and emotional being. Mm -hmm my language, you know, all those things. And that, you know, I mean, I am famous for having running away. I ran away from a Buddhist retreat. You know? <laughs> and actually it wasn't the silence. It was the gongs. Damn it, those gongs. Gong, <laughs> gong, gong. It's oh, like, <laughs> like gong to wake up, gong to do, kong chu, something or other, gong <laughs> to start <laughs> meditating. <laughs> And the food was crap. <laughs> um, I, I have never felt like so much like I'm in a Western and I'm free and I'm John Wayne and I've just saved the world as I did as I drove away from <laughs> that retreat. <laughs> and funnily enough, I think now I would probably enjoy it. It's where you Actually, are. You it's where you are in your life. Yeah, um, but for me is whilst you are doing, you know, it's like, okay, first I've got to acknowledge that I'm not in a good place. And, and where we started on this is the dysmorphia and my dismay at how many mother-daughter combos were going, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was like mom and daughter, like we're having like a, you know, mom-daughter experience, <laughs> both having our boobs done. Yeah. Is at you know at 16 17 like can you possibly know if these boobs are going to serve you for your life you know um and and that for me and the dysmorphia that goes you know with that and then i think as well because language about gender and sexuality and sexual orientation wow i don't want to be 17. No. it's a confusing world yeah. And everyone who's coming at with you is like, you know, am I bisexual or bicurious? You know, yeah. like, and if I say the wrong okay. one, it, it's, you know, and it's like, I don't know, I just want to shag everyone. 
Okay, but you know, you know that in my day it was like you're a slut, you know, and yeah. and it was <laughs> done, you know. <laughs> you don't need to stay together. <laughs> um, but we so first we have to actually acknowledge that and and be, and find those things like those beliefs that thin people are bitchy, but I still want to be one, or you know. That and actually, I really it. do have hate having a flap of skin and getting fungal infections every summer. Yeah. Like yeah. it really makes me unhappy, and I am going to cut it off. Yeah. But those aren't those are not decisions that we should make in two minutes. So maybe the fifteen years of standing on the cliff, yeah. I think it maybe was the right thing to do. Maybe yeah. because yeah. It, yeah. it it was something that goes. This really bugs me. Yeah. It really makes me feel bad about, like, when I look in the mirror. In fact, I don't look in the mirror because I don't like that person, yeah. you know. And then, you know, so for me is is the first step is, is seeing it. Yeah. Then there's a lot of hard work in what, because if you can see it, you can change it, right? Sure. So then there's the changing, and then we have this wonderful time when we are what do we say? We say we're unconsciously competent, you yeah. know, like you know, when you're a good driver, not like me, um, and you just drive home and you don't know how you got there. I never have that because I've always had like a ding or a prang on the way home. <laughs> so I never have that, but I believe me, some people have it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, but during that time, that work is hard. It's probably the hardest work you're ever going to do. I think it's the most fulfilling work you're ever going to do. I think you are going to, during and after that process of working on, okay, so this is my narrative and I want to change that narrative and I want to change the story of who I am and how I see things. Yeah. Um, you will know this as a coach. There's that moment, you know, uh, we, I call it the aha moment. Yeah, and there is a moment and uh, and every every coach wants to have an, an aha moment in every session. And we That's never get it, you know. They, everyone has their aha moment in the car on the way home, you know. <laughs> um, but there's a moment when somebody goes, oh, I get it. I, I see it. Yeah. Um, and having an aha moment is a profound experience of just having a different choice. Yes, instantaneous. Just like yes. That. Look, it's why I love the kinesiology so much in the way that I work, because I don't know if you know that I do kinesiology yes. as part of the way that I do. I actually work. don't know a lot about what it is. I it's just amazing. know be, I, it is amazing is because, again, when I had to try stuff, I went to a kinesiologist, yeah. and as I walked in, she lay down, uh, I lay down, she tapped me, I think, and then yeah. she said to me, what's the conversation that you're not having? And you know when you're like, I am taking my handbag and I'm running because you are a witch. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, just now your head is going to start spinning around because I don't know how you knew that, that but I am moving. <laughs> yeah. well, this Tell is me what it really is. <laughs> about the kind of is that the way that it, it works is that because your unconscious mind is actually having all of these stories, your unconscious mind has got all the belief systems, it's got all the sabotage programs, it's got all the understandings of who I am, how I am, how do I survive in the world, how do I get the attachment I need, how do I stay safe? But it's not sharing it with you consciously. It's just yes. sharing it with you in the way that you behave. It's got this, this feeling that comes up that drives you to behave in a certain way. Yes, and, and you can feel, you know, I mean, one of the things we do as integral coaches is we teach people to recognize not yes. fear, but churning in my stomach. Right. What is it? Feel you know, like? you yes. Know what the message is. What is it trying to tell me? Yeah. And so with kinesiology, it's, it's what we do is we use the body then to, un to, to unlock that understanding of what the unconscious is actually about. And so actually how to do that somatic piece, right. like how and to find it, yeah? How to find it for yourself, but also I can find it in the moment for, right now for you. I can, I can 
your body will tell me right now what's going on. So yeah. you might become good because that's in the process of, of our work together. I want you to be able to be good at your life. I don't want to, you're not coming back to see me for the rest of time, right? You must learn to what? Your no, 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 no. I think you've made a mistake, but. <laughs> <laughs> if I move, <laughs> I'm taking a tank with me. <laughs> well, the tank you'll come and see me. Yeah, really no, 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 then, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, now I feel so terrible. <laughs> but we so, will zoom. We will zoom. <laughs> so the 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 kinesiology helps to identify the belief systems because the body will tell you immediately if there's a belief system about it. And because that belief system is held so much, not just in the way that the brain processes, but in all the energetics around that. Yeah. And all of the emotional stress around that. And the trauma around that. And so with the kinesiology, we can actually change that in the, in the whole somatic body, in the whole physical experience of life. And, and, so and what's nice can, about that is that that's fast. It's, it's not so as had six sessions going... So where did you feel that in your body, which yeah. you try and ask a senior that question yeah. and not just get thrown out? <laughs> yeah. Like some people are like, oh, You know, because there's always that moment where I have to go, and how does it make you feel? <laughs> and you know, you can see them thinking, oh, my God, I've turned into Tony Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I love it so much because it's so, so quick and helping you to, you can have the insight, but also the change can happen very quickly without nice. even you having to go ping yourself. Wow. It, because you can literally change the physical response to, I thought that I had to do life like this. I yeah. thought that I had to do life like this. And the whole of the body responds accordingly. But we can change Absolutely. that response pretty much immediately instant wow the body does not have to respond accordingly and because of that yes. we get really i see my clients three months and they it's like a revolution in their lives they don't even bother to come back and see them again i they mean that for, for me is what most of us don't understand is that there is an event in the world right yeah. Yeah. and we have sensory organs and remember we slow yeah. so our sensory organs pick up data yes and then what we, then what happens is that our our super ego, our inner child, whatever you you know your inner critic, whatever you want to call it, takes over because their job is to keep you safe. Remember, yes. they want to keep you safe. And they are misguided, next, but they want to make you safe. You know, yeah. um, they take over, and then people tell you the edited version that's coming from their brain, yes. not. Yes. how they are experiencing that okay. um you know one of the things for me that i've noticed is there's a certain personality type but there is the first question the first thing that they will tell you is how sore their what's this muscle here are oh, it's the first okay. thing they'll talk about and it's like okay so already i know you're anxious <laughs> you know <laughs> um because there's a certain type of person who that's how, you know, they all have back problems, you know, yeah. um, and spend a fortune at the chiropractor when we could just go, okay, like we'll what if we didn't talk about anxiety? What if we talked about shoulders and what are things that make your shoulders hunch up, yeah. you know? So I think I just go slower than you. That's really bad because you're better value than me then. <laughs> you can't do it, <laughs> <laughs> it pays better. <laughs> the is I can't, I don't know. Anyway. No, a, there's, a, there's a time that you get to when you're like, you know what? I just don't care about whether your quarterly results made your share price go down by a cent. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get to that point, you know it, they know it, you're not doing any good. <laughs> and, and actually that is why I, I walk to, I, I have um, lots of corporate people, but they are coming as individuals. I don't do so corporate rewarding. programs anymore. Yeah, the, the individual yeah. stuff, you can just see that transformation like this opening. Absolutely, life. you and know. It it's beautiful. Yeah. Look, we need to wrap this sucker up. We've been going almost an hour and a half. Nobody watches that. <laughs> I <long>. know. 
<laughs> but, but you but should because it's worth it. Great value from us. <laughs> they will. It's like with it. It's like you know because my whole life, um, I've forgotten what her name is now. I have wanted to be the psychiatrist from the Sopranos. Like I've wanted to be here. I've wanted to sit in that chair with a mafia don and go, how does that make you feel, Tony? You know? And what and just and just to end on a on a smutty note, one of the things that I wanted to know about was BDSM. So I went to a Dom Oh, and I had them take me around their dungeon, okay? Okay, yeah. And <laughs> um, wait, 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 wait. Now, why am I telling you this? This is, <laughs> this is the problem with my brain is, why am I telling you this is that, um, well, one, you find out a whole lot about yourself. Like, if you want to tie me up, I am there. Uh, <laughs> and and just go to fat life and say rope work and they will be there for you yeah. um why did i want to go and uh, why did i want to go there um i can't even remember the beginning of the story it'll come back to me we'll have to do this again so i can tell you like what was what was you know why i went to the dungeon and um what an interesting experience, you know. But it's one of those things I've always wanted to know, you know, yeah. is I'm planning on going to one of those swingers things. I hope mm -hmm. that they have a corner for people who are like, no, I, I just, I'm just curious. Like, can we have like a viewing deck? You know, it's like, um, you know, a friend of mine said he went to one and he's standing having a beer, talking to a guy about like the rugby season or something. And a woman walks up, undoes his belt, unzips him, and proceeds. And he, and he was like, the, the, the curry cup. Like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> so the poor man told me this, and I'm like, dude, you're my wingman when we go. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Penny and I will be back because we find each other so freaking interesting. And anybody who finds it interesting is welcome to join the conversation. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, when I go, to, I'll tell you when they are because then I won't be Norman no mates at the bar on my own. <laughs> okay, we're going to call it for today. It's been such a sweet pleasure talking to you, Penny. <laughs> Thank you and we'll so see you much. Today. Yes, we were. Oh, I, I could do it every day. <laughs> you know, like Bette Midler says, but enough about me. What do you think about me? <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, if you enjoy, just keep your eyes peeled. Penny and I will put our details below in the Facebook feed of mine and hers. And so you can come and, you know, find out all of our stuff, all of the free stuff that we do, any videos that we put on YouTube. I've got loads and loads of free stuff available for you to help, you know, on your journey. Just if you can't afford or if you're not ready or if you just need a little kicker or a little jump starter there's lots of videos on youtube on my channel there's lots of free stuff available we do lots of these interviews we're going to do some stuff again in the future penny have you got a youtube channel as well do you have that kind of stuff available? i do but i haven't updated it since i did okay. the this since i did the whole um shape point issues you know okay, I, I think that was my therapy okay. therapy <laughs> So there'll be still relevant stuff about all the stuff that's coming. Yes, they will, because there'll be a song one coming up. <laughs> okay, then, uh, we're going to have an hour about songs. Okay, guys, have a good one. Uh, Cheers. Cheers. And go floating. It's amazing. Oh, I'm <laughs> close. It's amazing.